Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in this video I'd like to introduce you to everything you've wanted to know about piping. Now piping is when the cord is wrapped in fabric and then sewn into the edge of a seam to give it some pop and definition and as you can see it also adds quite a bit of character to the project as well. So in this two-part video series I'm going to take you through how to make your own piping from scratch and then in part two I'm going to show you how to sew it into a project and how to turn corners and curves. Now if you love educational sewing videos that help you grow your sewing skills and help you level up each project so it's better than the one before please consider giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button. Now piping essentially at its very most basic explanation is fabric that is wrapped around a length of cord or rope and that fabric is sewn into a tube down the length of that cord and then that cord is then taken and sewn into a seam so that it extends out of the seam and gives you a really nice little bit of definition and you can see that, that this adds uh, quite a bit of tailoring and elegance but just also a really nice uh, bit of simplicity to your project but just makes it really really pop. So what you'll find when you buy piping is that if you're going to purchase some uh, pre-made piping it typically comes in um, quite a small uh, width of piping and quite plain colours and you'll really be limited um, by the colours that the shop is selling to you here and you'll also be limited by the width of uh, the width of what you're buying here so typically it comes in very small piping and you might be wanting to make something that's really thick and you can see that you can purchase uh, cording in quite a few different uh, widths so this one's um, a narrower one this one's a bit wider and this one is like a jumbo one uh, which you might add to say a floor cushion or um, some other fairly chunky upholstery and it's fairly it sort of follows that you typically um, the larger that the size of the project that you're making your piping would be um, probably scaled up to fit that although that's not always uh, the rule but typically you want to make your um, piping fit your project and this is the size piping that you'll typically get in your store-bought uh, pre-made piping. This is um, a size double O or um, roughly two and a half uh, millimeters um, in diameter. And what's exciting about this is that you can make your own very, very easily. And this particular width is probably, I find the most beginner friendly uh, width to do it with because it's not too fat, uh, that it's hard to handle and it's not too thin that you're just going to sew over the edge of it. So um, it just gives you um, just the right amount to play with and it's probably my most used um, one to date. So even though it's beginner friendly, this is the one, this is my go-to piping that I use uh, whenever I can make a project. So this one is a little bit fatter and I just typically don't use this one as much. But you can see that the sky's the limit with what you want to make um, this one's just a lovely candy stripe one and you can imagine when this is sewn into a project it just really pops with that lovely candy striped edging uh, sticking out. The next important thing that I'd like to talk to you about is making piping that has the right seam allowance for your project. So you can see here that this piping that I have here this is a quarter inch seam allowance piping so I have used this in projects where I've had a quarter inch seam allowance and this particular one here is piping that has a 3 8 or 1 centimeter seam allowance and so if you're wanting to get a really nice snug fit for your piping which uh, we do we want it to really pop in the seam not be baggy or loose or also not be cut off and sort of be hidden in the seam by uh, just uh, being uh, slightly too small so we want to make sure that the seam allowance that we're using when we make the piping is the same as what is called for in the project 
And so if you are going to make custom piping, you're going to want to take your cord and I'll just use my extreme version here. And you're going to just wrap uh, your tape measure around your cord like so, nice and tightly. And you want to measure that. And this comes out at an inch and a half in circumference. So that is the uh, initial width of my piping that I need. And then I need to add two times my seam allowance on. So if I was going to have a quarter inch seam allowance, I would be adding a quarter plus a quarter would mean I would cut two inch width strips of bias to make this one. And if I was wanting to make a 3 8 inch seam allowance uh, piping, I would start at my uh, one and a half inch here and I would add two times three eighths which is three quarters which is ends up being two and a quarter inches that would be the thickness that I would uh, cut my strips of bias. So if we want to take that down to this uh, nice small size double zero piping here if I've got a quarter inch seam allowance that I'm wanting for this one I cut my strips at seven eighths um, inches wide for each strip and if I'm wanting a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I cut my strips at between 1 inch and just under 1 and an eighth inch. So that really does just depend on uh, how tight you can get this uh, snugly in. And for um, actual you know, purposes of using it, doesn't really matter. You'll get uh, a pretty nice even seam allowance working with a 3 8 inch seam allowance for that. So now we'll talk about the size of fabric that you need to make a project uh, with piping and the good thing about this is that typically for the projects that I make I'm only using just a really small amount of piping. I'm not typically making meters and meters of it and so that means that you can really get away with using uh, quite small scraps of fabric and it really just boils down to the length that you're willing to work with and how many joins that you're happy to have in your finished piping. So if you're only needing say 10 inches of piping, um, you're going to be cutting not even that basically. So I've got my ruler there on the 45 degrees and if I cut up there I would, would get pretty much 11 inches of piping which is a reasonable length if you were just going to put that um, along the edge of a small pouch or um, maybe around a pincushion you could get um, a cute little pincushion with some piped edges uh, just out of um, a small length like that and it really boils down to um, how many joins that you'd like to have so if you've got a length and you don't want any joins you could cut right up the middle and you're going to get about 21 inches of that strip and then as you go down you'll obviously get shorter strips and you'll have some wastage on the edge of whatever you don't end up cutting. So just for the purposes of this, I'm going to cut a couple of uh, decent sized lengths so that I can demonstrate this being sewn. I'm going to cut mine at just over an inch wide. And now I'm going to just cut, I'm going to use this one and just cut the second strip. Now if you'd like to see a full video of how I cut bias strips um, in bulk, um, you can watch that video here. So the next thing that you need to do is join these together. So you just find the two ends that um, oppose each other. Then you're going to flip that together and overlap those edges. And you can choose to do this by a lot or a little bit. The more, the more that you overlap your edges, the more you're going to waste and the less that your piping you'll make. 
So just overlap by as much as you're comfortable with and you're going to sew from this junction to this junction at the sewing machine. So now that you've joined it, you're just going to trim off your little triangular dog ears here. Just level with the seam and then open this out and just give that a really good finger press. But another uh, good trick for really making this join just disappear is make sure you do hit it with the iron and a bit of steam. And that will just really, really flatten that seam so that when you've got the cord wrapped inside of it, uh, you're really not going to see it um, in any noticeable way. So now we're ready to wrap the fabric around the cord. So we're going to lay this on the wrong side of the fabric and fold it so that the raw edges meet. I'm just going to give that a nice wiggle with your fingers so that you can feel that that cord is getting nicely snug right inside that um, far edge of the fabric there. And this is one of the reasons why working with bias fabric just works a little bit better than working with um, making this on the straight grain because all of this will be flexing and stretching around the cord and just helping it uh, to fit really well. So you can just go down the length of the fabric now, just pinning that into place. Just make sure you're not stretching the fabric and you're not stretching in, well, one edge unevenly. So now this is ready to take to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to stitch this together. So now we're at the sewing machine and I'm just going to put my zipper foot on. So my zipper foot just snaps into place and then I'm going to touch the button that moves the needle to the left and that's just going to help me sew right up nice and snug against the edge of this piping here. Okay, so I've just trimmed the edge of my piping um, at 90 degree angles to this so I don't have that uh, mitered edge sticking out anymore. And before I get started with the sewing, I'm just going to do a bit of a test with the needle just to see that the needle's going to land exactly where I want it. So I'm just going to hand crank the sewing machine towards me until I can see that that needle's landing right where I'd like it to be. Then you can remove your first pin and then just start sewing slowly down the length of that. Now I keep my finger here, not right next to the needle, I don't want to be quite that dangerous, but just sort of at the front of the foot here. And I just use that as a bit of a guide for the fabric to uh, make sure that it's not pushing out from underneath because uh, sometimes this has a tendency to do that a little bit. So when you get to a pin, just stop and remove it. And then just keep sewing along the length of this. And you can see, if we just stop and take a look at the work, that we're getting that stitching line nice and neatly and snugly up against that cord. It's not baggy, it's not too tight. It's nice and snug. As you come up to a join, you're just going to sew right across it. 
you're just wanting to make sure that you're keeping these raw edges here nicely aligned so that your seam allowance is going to remain consistent. Once again, practice makes perfect with this. If you find that your first attempt at making piping um, isn't quite this snug or quite this even, uh, then just keep going, just keep trying. Keep practicing some of these methods that you can see here. And it won't be long before you have very nice, neat, perfect piping. So then you can admire your work here.